for this talk, we find the values of cosine and sine for 2 pi fifths and 4 pi fifths. Our interest in these values is twofold. First, from the point of view of trigonometry, we know cosine and sine for pi thirds, pi fourths, pi sixths. The next angles on the list are multiples of pi over 5. On the other hand, our answers are going to involve the golden ratio. So, among the many places in mathematics where the golden ratio arises, we'll have it when we're working with five-fold symmetries. Now, let's consider the unit circle. We're going to mark off all multiples of 2 pi over 5. So, we'll have a regular pentagon. If we're looking for relations among these angles between the cosines and sines, we note since 2 pi fifths goes to 8 pi fifths under a reflection through the x-axis, we're going to have the relation that sine of 4 theta equals minus sine of theta, when theta is equal to 2 pi over 5. So I want to apply double angle formulas to this relation to get to a point where we can do numerical computation. Now, we have our double angle formulas for sine and cosine. We take our equation. So we're just going to follow out the left hand side till I get everything in terms of cosine and one sine. If we set that equal to minus sine, then because we're not going to use sine equal to zero, okay, we know that the sine of this angle okay, is a positive number up here, negative down here. We can cancel the sines out. So it's going to leave us with this polynomial and cosine. And then we're going to do a substitution to work with this. If we let x be equal to cosine theta, we can substitute. Then we're trying to factor this polynomial. We start by applying the rational roots test. Of the potential rational roots, the only one that hits out is 1 half. Now, if we try to solve cosine theta equal to 1 half, we already know that that goes with pi thirds or 5 pi thirds in the range from 0 to 2 pi. So we could throw this solution away. So we want to factor an x minus a half out of our polynomial. You could do that using long division or synthetic division. With synthetic division, put our half here. We load in our coefficients. I drop the 8, multiply by a half, we get a 4. Add, we get a 4. Multiply by a half, we get a 2. Add, we get a minus 2. Multiply by a half, we get a minus 1. Add, we get a 0. So that means I can factor our polynomial as x minus a half times 8x squared plus 4x minus 2. Now we can factor a 2 out of that, so we're really interested in the roots of this quadratic here. We apply the quadratic equation, then we get two solutions. For the cosine of 2 pi over 5, we know this cosine is positive, so I choose the positive solution. So it's minus 1 plus square root of 5 over 4. Now, that's equal to minus a half, phi 2. Phi 2 is equal to 1 minus square root of 5 over 2. And what makes this special is that it's a root of x squared minus x minus 1. If we apply the double angle formula, we can get the cosine of 4 pi over 5. Okay, so that'll be equal to minus 1 minus square root of 5 over 4, which is equal to minus 1 half phi 1. Phi 1 is equal to 1 plus square root of 5 over 2. And that's better known as golden mean or the golden ratio. Again, that's going to be a root of this polynomial. So at this point, we should go to a calculator, check our answers. So that's going to work out. Now, for phi 1 and phi 2, they're going to satisfy the following relations, which are useful to have around. So if we square either one, it's the same as just adding one. Okay, That's because we're a root of our polynomial here. If we add them, we get a 1, and if we multiply, we get a minus 1. Now, we have the following formulas for sine. These should be checked with the calculator. 
Note, I'm taking the square root of an expression with a square root in it. That's fine, at least we're taking the square root of important numbers. Now, to get these, I just start with cosine squared plus sine squared equals one. Follow my nose. So for instance, for sine of four pi over five, we have this expression. We know that sine of four pi over five is positive. I'll sub out five one squared with one plus five one. Then we'll follow our nose. When I get to this step, we can factor out the square root of five from the bigger square root to get a fourth root of five. Then what's left over is gonna be the square root of the absolute value of phi two, and that's our formula. Now, we'll also have the relation sine of two pi over five equals phi one sine of four pi over five. We could check that directly and we could do it checking with a calculator. Now, this just comes from our double angle formula for sine. So we'll have the sine of four pi over five equals two cosine of two pi over five, sine of two pi over five. And then we know this value, and I can get rid of the minus phi two by multiplying both sides by phi one. Finally, we can get cosine and sine four pi fifths and three pi fifths just by noting the positions of these angles relative to two pi fifths and four pi fifths.